we are overcoming the spirit of poverty. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The other day we overcame the spirit of fear and we are going to overcome the spirit of fear. Uh, yesterday we were battling the spirit of uh, unbelief. Uh, what a day it was. Now today we are overcoming the spirit of poverty. <laughs> After today, somebody's life shall never be the same. You know, one of the things that was coming to me uh, as I was, you know, preparing and as we were, as Christine was leading us in prayer, oh, there are people actually who don't believe that poverty is a spirit. Uh, now, if you are among those people, your first step to overcoming poverty is going to be to believe that there can be this thing called the spirit of poverty. The mm. spirit of poverty. It can be in a family line. It can be, it can even be like in a community. It can be, it can, it can be in a, like, or it can be, you find like in the family, like the all the ladies are poor or all the men are poor the ladies you know all the brothers are poor all the girls are it can be a spirit are you with me but today we are overcoming this thing and when we say we are doing it today that doesn't mean that tomorrow you stop. That doesn't mean that other days you, 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 you know, you stop. No, we, 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 it just means that we have entered the part of the journey where we start overcoming this spirit of poverty. Are you with me? Now, we are combining a number of scriptures today. Uh, Christine has really done a good job leading us in binding this spirit of poverty. I just want to remind us something, something uh, that we read the other day or some two days ago. Uh, Micah, <laughs> who remembers our lovely scripture from Micah? I'm even excited just by mentioning the word Micah. Who? Somebody today is going to shout, Breaker! <laughs> Breaker! Ah, I was reminded about breaker, breaker, breaker. Our lovely scripture, we are going back to it today. Eh, we are going back to it today. We are combining, it is going to be a, a combined attack. A combined attack using heavy artillery. Ah, we are using heavy artillery against the spirit of poverty. Yeah, you know, it needs... It needs, it needs heavy artillery to be uprooted. As some of us, it's been in generations for a long time. It's been in our family for a long time. Micah chapter 2 verse 13. The breaker, the Messiah, will go up before them. They will break through, passing through the gate, and go out through it. And their king will pass on before them. The Lord at their head. Ah, ah. The breaker will go up before you, child of God. You will break through. Uh -huh. You'll pass through that gate like there's been this ancient gate in your family. This ancient gate in your lineage you just can't go through eh? it's a gate called poverty ah i tell you it can be a gate a high gate a high gate you can't go through the breaker the messiah breaker the messiah 
he will break through. He will go up before you, break through, and pass in through that gate. I tell you, you will pass in through that gate and you will go through it and your king will pass on before you. The breaker. You know that scripture which says, Open up your heads, all ye gates. Ah, today we are using heavy artillery against the spirit of poverty. Open up, the scripture says, Open up your heads, all ye gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors. We are saying, Everlasting doors of poverty in my life, in my family family in my community be lifted up oh yes be lifted up open up your heads oh ye gates be lifted up ye everlasting doors that the king of glory shall come in oh, oh. you're breaking through that's another powerful scripture we are using I told you we are doing a combi. We today we the battle we have. We are unleashing different weapons. We are using heavy artillery to uproot this thing. This thing you 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 have. Oh, ah, shakata. Poverty. You must hate it with a passion. You must hate it. It must be a spirit that you loathe. It must be a spirit that smells. It must be a spirit that you hate with all your life. And you must bind it. You must uproot it. You must attack it. In the name of Jesus, we are commanding every lift up your heads. All ye gates, all ye gates, be lifted up. Ye everlasting doors. Everlasting, you know what an everlasting door is? Like something that has stayed there, like it is there. You wake up, it is still there. You come out of the, the prayer meeting, it is still there. You, you, you know, you finish your Bible study, the good thing is there. Ah, it is there. It's like it accompanies you to a different place. You know, this poverty. I was telling people in church on Sunday about this thing that. Apostle Moses Mukisa taught us it's called the poverty reflex. You know, a poverty reflex. You can have a poverty reflex. Huh. You, you, you enter a supermarket and you look at something, you like it, and the reflex quickly tells you, don't look there. That one is not for you. You cannot afford that. Don't look there. You know, somebody offers you a lift. In a certain kind, of, no, 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 I, I'm okay. The, the, the reflex tells you, no, for you, you don't move in this kind of car. Poverty reflex. You think about a certain school and the reflex tells you, no, 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 no. Don't, don't even think about that school. Your children don't go to those kind of schools. You don't pass in that section. A poverty reflex. You, you, you don't move through certain neighborhoods. You don't... You, it tells you you can never live in that kind of neighborhood. You know, you, you, oh. We are, these ancient doors, these everlasting doors, be lifted up. Be lifted up, ye everlasting doors. The breaker, we are announcing, the breaker comes before us. We, the breaker moves before us. We go through this gate. We go through this gate. In the name of Jesus, oh Lord. This, this is one of those sessions, uh, you know, where you wish like, I would be still like, the time would, ah, like pause. Because there is something that we, we are overcoming. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Micah gave us that awesome prophecy about the breaker you are breaking through you are seeing god as the lord of breaking through baal perazim he is he is our break the god of breakthrough we are breaking through this barrier oh the name of jesus you know this reflex 
they, 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 when people, they all drop you a chair, like, they, they never reach where you live. Like, whoever gives you a lift, you tell them, leave me there. Like, just, I'm doing something. I'm first doing something in town. You're not actually doing anything in town. The reflex tells you they can't reach where you live. They can't be there. You know, you can't host a cell meeting. When they say you are supposed to host a cell meeting, say, no, 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 no. I, I will not be around. You quickly create the reason that you will not be around. Because the poverty reflex quickly tells you you can't host people of such a caliber in your house. Reflex. Kabosha. We are binding this thing in the name of Jesus. On this seventh day, we are saying we are coming out of this. We are coming out of this. I'm coming out of this. I want you to declare, I'm coming out of this. I cannot stay like this. I am coming out of this cycle, this cycle of death. I'm coming out of this in the mighty name of Jesus. Kadosa. In the name of Jesus, the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. You must prosper. You must prosper. Open up your heads. O ye gates, be lifted up, ye everlasting doors. Be lifted up, ye everlasting doors. The breaker, <laughs> the old KJV says, the breaker is calm. Before, you know, sometimes you just need to read these things like in KJV. The breaker is calm before them. The English doesn't sound right, but it sounds spiritual. Oh, the breaker is calm before them. They have broken up for this. <laughs> they have broken up and have passed through the gate as we are praying and fasting in this season. It is not in vain. We are breaking up. We are passing through the gate. They are gone out by it. They are gone out by it. Their king shall pass before them and the Lord on the head of them. Name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. No, poverty is bad. Poverty. Poverty is bad. <laughs> it's bad. I tell the truth. If you love it, I don't. Me, I don't. I don't. There are people who talk about it like it's a fruit of the Holy Spirit. It's not. It's not. It's from the devil. Comes to steal, to kill and destroy. Not. I hate it. I hate it. Go and say I'm a prosperity preacher. Okay, me, I'm a prosperity preacher. I hate poverty. I hate poverty. I hate poverty. You know, poverty. Poverty, you, you know, you can't do certain things. You can't, you know, you have this whole anointing. You can't preach on TBN because you can't afford it. You know, I hate it. All this anointing, all this grace revelations all this healing anointing you can't have a program on tbn you can't you know i hate it to hell with you the breaker is come before me the breaker i announce a breaking anointing i announce a breaking anointing over everybody on this call you break through those limitations you break through those barricades of poverty you break through those cycles in the mighty name of jesus you break through you break through that cycle that cycle of losing contracts you break through i tell you that we break that cycle like you keep losing contracts you almost get it you lose it you get it you lose it. you almost are there then you're not there we break that cycle in the name of jesus we break that cycle name of jesus you're almost getting a job then you don't get it they they almost call you then they don't call you they they, they call you then they say you you did so well but you are the second you why, why should you always be the second on every interview like why are you anointed to be second ah i refuse it i refuse it you must refuse it in the name of jesus Ah, you are the head, not the, the Bible did not say you are the second. It said you are the head, not the tail. You are above and not beneath. Ah, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. I am content with being second. I am content with being third. Who said? Who said? 
Who said that every interview should be the third? Who said that every contract you should be the third? Who said that you should be the third? You are the head and not the tail. In the name of Jesus, in this BTZ, we are reclaiming our place. We are reclaiming our place. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You know, it... it <laughs> God is unique. God is interesting. It is in God where you can have everybody being the first. It is in God where you can have everybody taking the first position. You say you the, shall be the head. And all, all of us can be the first. Like we can be the family of firsts. Codes. Oh yes. Oh yes. We are breaking the thing. We are bre I said we are breaking the thing. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I'm taking my position. The breaker is with me. In the breaker, I live and move and have my being. The breaker has promised to never leave me nor forsake me. The breaker goes before me. A fire goes before him and burns up all his enemies. Ah, Yakosa, Yakosa, Kondabo Sendaladiosko, Pigaladies, Kandobo Godesta. In the mighty name of Jesus, I'm breaking through. I'm breaking through. You are breaking through this gate. I, we have some awesome promises. We have some awesome promises. I want you to see some awesome promises that I saw this morning. When we pray and fast, uh, when we, you know, we are doing, we are doing Joel two eleven. Okay. We are doing Joel two twelve. He says, therefore, also now, says the Lord, turn and keep on coming to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, with mourning, until every hindrance is removed. I said, until every hindrance is removed. We are kabosata. Every hindrance must be removed in the name of Jesus. Every hindrance before you, we remove it. I, I come against it in the name of Jesus. I come against it in the name of Jesus. You know, hindrance, hindrance. You have these great ideas, but hindrance, hindrance. You don't have access. Every hindrance is removed in the name of Jesus. The breaker goes before you and removes every hindrance. I tell you the truth. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Ah, you know. We are doing verse 13. We are rending our hearts and not our garments. We are returning to the Lord. For he is gracious and merciful. He is slow to anger. He is abounding in loving kindness. He revokes his sentence of evil. Okay. Okay. Maybe the poverty in, in, in my family was the sentence of some evil, was some punishment for some evil which my forefathers did or something, some, some sacrifice they made or blah, 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 etc, etc. In the name of Jesus, as I pray and fast, that sentence is revoked in the name of Jesus. That sentence, that generation curse is revoked into the, in the name of Jesus. It is revoked and I enter into generation blessing. Ah, Yes, it's revoked. It's revoked. In the name of Jesus, the sentence is revoked. I said the sentence is revoked. In the name of Jesus, whatsoever my forefathers did, whatsoever my mothers did, whatsoever, whatsoever they did, and brought judgment on our family, that sentence is revoked. That sentence is revoked as I pray and fast in this in this. I said in this system, in the name of Jesus, that sentence is revoked. Oh, yes. The generation curse is revoked. I now enter into a generation blessing. I now start a generation blessing from me down the generation. Now we, we are in generation blessings. Ah, I break, I break this spirit of poverty. Break it in the name of Jesus. Do you know? Do you know what it means for people to order things? You go in a place, they have even taken you out. They say, what will you take? Say, I just, I'll just take black tea. No, reflex. They have taken you out. They are going to pay. Say, I'll just take black tea. Jesus. I'll just have water. I'm just okay. A reflex. Tells you, you don't deserve it. 
You can't afford it. What if they don't pay? Ah, I rebuke it. In the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Do you know what is happening? Who knows? Verse 14. Who knows that he will turn, revoke your centers of evil, and leave a blessing behind him. The Lord told me to tell you he's leaving a blessing behind you. He's leaving a blessing for you. The Lord told me to tell you he's leaving a blessing for you as you pray and fast in this season. In the mighty name of Jesus, he is leaving a blessing for you. And this thing about the blessing of God, it makes a man rich and add no sorrow with it. He told me to tell you, he's leaving a blessing. Trevor, you are a liar. The Lord is leaving a blessing for me. He's, who knows that he will turn and revoke your sentence of evil, Joel 2.14, and leave a blessing behind him. Oh, leave a blessing behind him. Leave a blessing behind him. I have a blessing. I have a blessing that he has left me. I have a blessing that he has left me. I am a blessed man. Declare it. Say, I'm a blessed man. I'm a blessed woman. He has left a blessing behind me. It manifests. It's a matter of days, a matter of months. This blessing that he has left me, it's going to manifest in the name of Jesus. It's going to make me rich. It's going to add no sorrow with it in the name of Jesus. Jesus, I'm blessed. Kudabo sata. A grain offering, a dream offering. You know, when I read this thing about the Lord leaving a blessing, the Lord reminded me of a certain psalm. <laughs> a certain psalm. Psalm, I want you to see it. Psalms 118, verse 24 and 25. What a prayer. I pray that you pray this prayer every single day of this BTZ. I pray you pray this prayer. And I pray this prayer comes to pass because he's a, a God who answers prayer. Psalms 118 verse 24. What a prayer. I read it. And Jesus, Jesus, you know, you see, he says, this is the day which the Lord has has brought about, we will rejoice and be glad in it. You hear that? Now verse 25. Save now, we beseech you. Oh Lord, send now prosperity. <laughs> okay. Let them send Mumbai, I'm a prosperity preacher. Is that verse in your Bible? Isn't that verse in the Bible? Am I the one who wrote it? Save now, we beseech you. Me, I am, I am crying to God. I, Go and broadcast everywhere. Me, I am crying out to God. I'm saying, oh Lord, send me prosperity. I need a lot of it. 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 Let those ones who believe poverty is a fruit of the Holy Spirit, let them be somewhere. Me, I need prosperity because the Lord delights in the prosperity of his servants. The Lord delights in the prosperity of his saints. Send now prosperity, O Lord. Send now prosperity, O Lord, that I will live where I want to live, that I will build what I want to build. Send now prosperity, O Lord. Do you know? Do you know you can be an anointed preacher? And they call you to a certain place. You have the word. You have the anointing. You can't afford to go there. <laughs> and you say, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I can't make it. I, I, I'm busy. You're not busy. You're poor. I, I can't make it. You can't afford. You can't afford to go there. No. The other day I went to preach in some village. They just invited me to preach in a pastor's conference in some village. I told them I, I, I didn't ask you for fuel. I put fuel in my car. I've driven to this village. And in case you think I want love offering, I've even, I've even brought a contribution to your conference. And I preached and left. Yeah. <laughs> You 
you know. When the Lord sends you prosperity, you won't be saying, they first send me transport. You know those bashers? I've seen things in your, in your compound which we need to remove from your compound, but send me transport to come and remove those things. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Save, save, oh Lord. Send me prosperity. I pray, let it be your prayer today. Let it be your prayer today. Let it be your prayer. Send now prosperity. Send now prosperity. Do you know, your business can prosper. <laughs> your business can prosper. It is in this, in this, uh, this uh, whole S1, whatever, school fees, what, uh, new schools, whatever, that I realized a, a school can prosper. A school, there are schools which have prospered, you know, they don't have an announcement on the radio. They don't have what? But people are struggling, lining up to pay commitment fee that we commit ourselves that we are going. <laughs> I was there where they are like, you are even paying, your son even qualified, even has the points. But you, you, you have to commit yourself. While you are at that lining up, there is another school somewhere. They are putting endless announcements. Hey, we are there. We have good buildings. We are there. We have computers. We, we eat. Our children eat food. They eat meat three times a day. Bring us our children. We have even given food bursary to the what? You know? And... <laughs> Your business can prosper and people cross the city to come to your business. I tell you, we, are, we have good things. Our teachers are smart. Our teachers put on ties. We have a generator. We have one. We have stable power. Ah, the schools which prospered, they are not saying anything. They made a name. <laughs> ah. But are you getting this? <laughs> are you getting this? Send me prosperity. Send me prosperity. I tell you, God's prosperity, you will be helped. When you come out of poverty, you will be helped. Because you will you'll help somebody in your family. You'll, you, 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 you'll be able to, 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 to afford certain things that you can't afford. You'll be able to go to places you can't go to. You'll be able to... <laughs> You know, so you find you you find you live in a place and it's <sighs> remember that church where which was where the synagogue of Satan was. You know you <clears throat> you know <sighs> send me prosperity, Lord. Send me prosperity. I'll never forget the day I was moving in a, we were moving in a small tax. We are coming from some village in 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 Ruchiga. I was I had done some work there for a project. I was coming back, use the small tax. First of all, the driver, after every like three kilometers, he would stop, go and fix something under the car. And then continue. And then after three kilometers, he stopped, goes and fixes something under the car. I looked around, everybody looked okay. Jesus. Everybody looked okay. The limit was when we, we, we were climbing the hill. We were climbing the hill. The guy turned and faced where we are coming from and climbed that thing in reverse. Not only that, he <clears throat> this is a true story. True story. I tell you, poverty is bad. This is a true story. I was in the car. I was in that front seat. The guy, now his head was out. His head, we were, we were just now, I was a neighbor to his legs. His head was out. He was climbing the thing in reverse. We are seeing buses passing by, buses passing us in the opposite direction. And I looked around and everybody seemed okay with it. That's when I realized I was in the wrong place with the wrong crowd, in the wrong car. But you see, it's what I could afford. You must 
You must, you know, people, I tell you, not everybody who dies in an accident should have died in that accident. No. Some die in an accident because you just, the only car you could afford was that DMC. So you moved in that DMC, they transported you up, 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 up. The thing hit a pothole, you flew off. And here you arrived in heaven, Ali. 50 years early. Why are you here? I was up on a certain car. One thing led to another. Here I am. I bind the spirit of poverty. <laughs> I bind the spirit. You must hate poverty. You know, I was, my God, we climbed up Kabaraga. It's a hill called Kabaraga. We climbed it in reverse. Jesus. I told myself, no, these things must change. You must, you must refuse certain things, Tim. You must refuse certain things. You know. Pastor Kayanda told the story of the first time he flew in a plane. You know, they brought, they, they, he had carried pancakes. You know, they brought the, those things they serve in the plane. And he said, no, 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 I won't take. Because he thought they are going, they, they won't ask him to pay for it. You know, we must refuse. We must refuse. We must refuse. I'm not hungry. When the hunger is killing you, say, I'm not hungry. Hunger is killing you. You're almost salivating. I'm not hungry. I'm hungry. Poverty is bad. I remember in first year, the, my first date, you know, I carried all the money I had in my suitcase. I carried it in my pocket. True story. All the pocket money they had given me. I was going, I was taking her to a place called Oxford Inn. Those in Maryland know Oxford Inn. I was like, what if I reach there and I can't afford the money? True story. I carried all the money in my bag. Poverty is bad. I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> anyway, I will not add you any other stories. But I hope you have got the point. <laughs> Today we are overcoming the spirit of poverty. Poverty embarrasses. That's why you will see scriptures. Let me read you one scripture, you see. You know, God, God says, there is that scripture I read, uh, um, <laughs> that, that my children will never be put to shame. Hmm? My children will never be put to shame. Joel chapter 2 verse 26. Eh? When God has delivered you from a spirit of poverty. And why he wants to deliver you from a spirit of poverty. Joel chapter 2 verse 26 says. And you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God. Who has dealt one last with you. And my people shall never be put to shame. And my people shall never be put to shame. When he has delivered you from poverty, you shall never be put to shame. The shame of climbing up a hill in reverse. The shame of moving in the car when the driver, his head is outside. The shame of the driver driving you while standing. The shame of the driver driving from the, like you are in the car. And you know, they, they, they made the car for the steering wheel to be in front of the driver. But the driver, you're in the car and the steering wheel is beside the driver. You know what I'm talking about, those cars, where the driver is besides the steering wheel, four people in front. When you see the traffic, you all hide your heads. Poverty. I hate it. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will afford decent transport. You will afford decent transport. You will say, I'm paying for this seat. I'm sitting there alone. In the name of Jesus, I'm paying for the extra. You will afford it. You will afford decent accommodation. You will afford decent meals. You will afford decent schools. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will afford. You will, my people will never be put to shame in the name of Jesus. For the Lord will deal wondrously with you. The Lord will deal wondrously with you in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus.